Hello all, welcome to my channel Codify with Sonal. Today we are going to see the part 2 series of AWS Solution Architect SOCA 03 version. This is a practice series and I have already told you that please do not rely only on questions. Study the concepts and uh, how if you want to see how you can plan the strategy and what all courses you can enroll. I have created a separate video on that. I will link it in the description box as well as in the i button above. You can check it out. So let's start with the questions. So we have covered 5 questions in the previous uh, practice series. In the part 1 you can check that out. You might be seeing the link here above. So let's start with today's question. So a marketing company is storing CSV files in an S3 bucket for statistical analysis. An application on an EC2 instance needs permission to efficiently process the CSV data stored in the S3 bucket. Which action is most securely grant the EC2 instance access to the S3 bucket? So now uh, there's a CSV files which are stored inside S3 bucket. Okay, and your EC2 needs the permission to process that efficiently. Okay, so it's basically EC2 wants to talk to S3 in simple terms. So let's go option by option. So attach a resource based policy. So what is resource based policy? They are policies that are attached to the resources. Okay, you can specify who has access to the resource and what actions they can perform. But here we need EC2 to talk to S3. Okay. So, this is not the correct answer. Then coming to creating an IAM user for the application with specific permission to the S3 bucket. So, if you want uh, to give access, uh, use, uh, creating a separate user only for this reason does not make sense. Okay. Then storing AWS credentials directly on the EC2 instance for applications on the instance to use for API calls. So, credentials directly is a big no. As you know, AWS security will be at risk. So, the correct answer to this is associate an IAM role with least privilege permissions to the EC2 instance profile. In this way, EC2 will be able to access a in a very secured way. Okay. And the question here points to most secure most securely granting. Okay. So, credentials can never be most securely granting it. So, coming to the next question, you are a solution architect at an MNC, a large multinational client has requested a design for the multi-region, multi-master database. The client has requested that the database be designed for fast, massively scaled applications for a global user base. The database should be fully managed service, including the replication. Which AWS service can deliver these requirements? Okay, so first thing, uh, let's go with the options S3 with cross-region replication. So, first of all, S3 is object store, not a multi-master database. Okay. So, this is automatically out of question. Then one more, first try to eradicate the options. Okay. So, now in EC2, you can uh, build the database, but uh, DB level replication is required and there is nothing called as EBS replication. So, this, these two answers are out of question. Then coming to RDS with multi-AZ or DynamoDB with global tables and cross region replication. So, RDS with multi-AZ is not multi-master. Like you, you cannot write into multiple databases at one time. Okay. At one time, you can write only on one database. So, the correct answer to this is DynamoDB with global tables and cross region replication. So, when you create a global table, you can specify the AWS regions where you want the table to be available. One more point here is, I would like to say DynamoDB performs all the tasks, you know, like creation as well as, you know, propagating all ongoing data changes to all of the tables. So, if you want a fully managed service including replication, DynamoDB would be the best option. So, coming to next question, uh, you are planning to launch a Redshift cluster for processing and analyzing a large amount of data. The Redshift cluster will be deployed into a VPC with multiple subnets. Which construct is used when provisioning the cluster to allow you to specify a set of subnet, subnets in the VPC that the cluster will be deployed to? Okay. So, about Redshift cluster, what, how it works is a huge thing. So, I would like to say that I'll put the link in the description box where you can read about what, how Redshift cluster works and how you can uh, create it and a lot of other things. So, better you can see the document. 
and uh, coming to options here so first of all uh, subnet group so subnet group is you not used by cluster wise it is used by elastic cache okay then az that is availability zone availability zone is the part of uh, global infrastructure okay then db subnet group is for rds not for redshift okay then coming to this cluster subnet group cluster subnet group allows you to specify a set of subnets in your vpc that's what we are looking for right so this is a straightforward answer which construct is used to specify set of subnets in the vpc that's cluster subnet group next a solution architect is responsible for a web application that runs on ec2 instances that say sit behind an alb application load balancer auto scaling is used to launch instances in three across three az's the web application serves large image files and these are stored on the amazon efs file system users have experienced delays in retrieving the files and the architect has been asked to improve the user experience so how can the architect do that okay so we'll go option by option again uh, cache static content using cloud front yes it can be an option cloud front is ideal for catching uh, caching static content then reducing the file size of the images this also can be an option but it as reducing file can give you better retrieval time okay so uh, but cloud front is a more better approach so as of now i i say a i can eradicate b moving the digital assets to ebs not at all why because it does not make any easy access or improve your performance and using spot instances can definitely lower your cost but you will not get a good user experience so our question here is not of having less cost it is about how you can improve more of user experience so when you see these kind of questions just try to focus on what they are exactly asking try to find out the keywords here okay so the correct answer is caching the static content using cloud front coming to the next question so a company needs the ability to analyze the log files of its proprietary application the logs are stored in json format in an s3 bucket queries will be simple and will run on demand okay so here you see the keywords queries will be simple okay one of the point a solution architect needs to be needs to perform the analysis with minimal changes to the existing architecture minimal changes to the existing architecture as in it does not want to shift the data from here to there okay what should the solutions architect do to meet these requirements with the least amount of operational overhead so now in this scenario they don't want to move the data why because they don't they want to have uh, minimal changes to the existing architecture they want to have least amount of operational overhead and third point is queries will be simple so when you have simple queries in s3 which service do you use to run the queries athena right but let us see the other options also redshift to load the content as i said do not move the content because it wants minimal changes less amount of operational overhead cloudwatch logs again you are moving the data AWS glue to catalog the data no moving data is required okay and these are very simple queries so there is no point to involve emr and everything there is nothing to do least amount of operational overhead queries in s the uh, data is in s3 run athena and run the queries as you need it okay so coming to the next one so a company hosts a data lake on aws the data lake consists of data in s3 and rds for postgres sql the company needs a reporting solution that provides data visualization and includes all the data sources within the data lake key pointer data visualization only the company's management team should have access to all the visualizations only the company's management team focus okay the rest of the company should have only limited access okay so which solution should meet this requirements you say visualization okay data visualization tool in aws what we have is quick sight okay so first thing that should come to your mind is quick sight so automatically you eradicate glue table automatically you eradicate glue table so coming to quick sight we have two options 
say create an analysis in uh, amazon quick site connect all the data sources and create new data sets public dashboards publish dashboards to visualize the data share the dashboards with the iam roles okay now it is saying that the company's management team should have full access so there is a particular user you, uh, you have to share it with particular users and groups so the correct answer to this will be create an analysis in amazon quick site and connect the data sources and create new data sets and publish the dashboard so after publishing you will share the dashboard with the appropriate users and groups okay and uh, to further understand this i will share a link down where you can read about how you can uh, share the dashboards with uh, users and groups after publishing the dashboard okay let's go to the next question a company is recently migrated to aws and wants to implement a solution to protect the traffic that flows in and out of the production data uh, vpc the company had an inspection server on its on premises data center the inspection server performed specific operations such as traffic flow inspection and traffic filtering the company wants to have the same functionalities in the aws cloud okay so how will you meet these requirements so first thing uh, focus on the key pointers here traffic flows in and out of the production data vpc okay and it needs traffic flow inspection and traffic filtering so when you see traffic flow inspection and traffic filtering which thing gives you that aws network firewall so using network what is network firewall it is a stateful managed thing by given by aws to you know to create the required rules for that you need for inspection and traffic filtering okay and you can filter the traffic at the perimeter of the vpc you can read more about it in the given uh, link down in the description box so coming to the next question a company is implementing a new business application the application runs on two amazon ec2 instances and uses an amazon s3 bucket for document storage a solutions architect needs to ensure that the ec2 instances can access the s3 bucket what should the solutions architect do to meet this requirements okay so again this is about ec2 wants to talk to s3 okay so i guess we can easily state that the correct answer what the correct answer is okay creating a role that creating a role that grants you the access to s3 bucket and atta attaching the role to ec2 instances i have already explained that in the previous question this is a different form different way of asking this question okay so coming to next question a solutions architect is using s3 to design the storage architecture of a new digital media application the media files must be resilient to the loss of an az okay some files are accessed frequently while other files are rarely accessed in an unpredictable pattern very important key pointer unpredictable pattern okay the solutions architect must minimize the cost of storing and retrieving the media files which storage option meets these requirements okay now uh, infrequent access uh, both the infrequent access does not make sense here because you don't know how rarely it will be accessed okay coming to standard and intelligent tiering so so when you see unpredictable pattern so the key pointer is s3 intelligent tiering coming to next question a company is storing backup files by using s3 standard storage the files are accessed frequently for one month however the files are not accessed after one month make your pointers frequently for one month not accessed after that the company must keep files indefinitely okay and which storage solution must meet these requirements most cost effectively let's go to the options configuring s3 intelligent tiering s3 intelligent tiering i just now told you when you have unpredictable pattern then you should think of it but here we know a pattern that okay one month it will be accessed very frequently then it will not be accessed at all but they want to keep it, keep the files okay so and they are already telling us that one month they are keeping it in s3 standard storage standard uh, class okay so create an s3 life cycle co uh, configuration to transition objects from s3 standard to deep glacier after one month good option it cost effective option create an s3 uh, life cycle tra configuration to transition objects from s3 standard to s3 standard infrequent class after one month 
what is the point after one month you don't even wa want to access it you just want to keep it like an archive create an s3 uh, life cycle configuration to transition objects from s3 standard to one zone not at all okay again we don't want to use after one month infrequent access is not at all a point okay so this is it for today we'll be doing further questions in the next part if you have any doubts on this please let me know in the comment box below if anyone is interested to uh, learn about java i have a whole java playlist core java playlist on my channel uh, please check it out and uh, i'll link the i'll put the link in the description box and if you're interested in the cloud practitioner series if anyone is doing cloud practitioner also you can check cloud practitioner practice series which is going on as well as the strategy for cloud practitioner so let's codify with sonal in the next video till then stay happy please like share and subscribe my channel do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you get a notification of the updated video thank you